हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन चैप्टर फाइव चेंज एंड डेवलपमेंट इन इंडस्ट्रियल सोसाइटी एंड आवर टॉपिक इज हाउ पीपल फाइंड जॉब्स इफ यू ओपन द टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया ऑन अ वेडनेसडे मॉर्निंग यू विल फाइंड अ सेक्शन कॉल्ड टाइम असेंट हियर जॉब्स आर एडवर्टाइज एंड टिप्स आर गिवन अबाउट how to motivate yourself or your workers to perform better the person will get benefit like house rent allowance the qualification required for the job are specified in great detail in such jobs there are clear avenues for promotion and you can expect that the seniority will matter let us look at private sector job this is also regular salaried employment and the employer is well known hotel but here the salary and qualifications required are flexible and the job is likely to be on contract look at the language used in these advertisements such as loyalty program each organization tries to create its own work culture but only a small percentage of people get jobs through advertisements or through the employment exchange people who are self employed like plumbers electrician and carpenters at one end and teachers who give private tuitions architects and freelance photographers at the other end all rely on personal contracts they hope that their work will be an advertisement for them mobile phones have made life much easier for plumbers and others who can now cater to a wider circle of people job recruit meant as a factory worker takes a different pattern in the past many workers got their job through contractors or jobbers in the kanpur textile mills these jobbers were known as the mistries and were themselves workers they came from the same regions and communities as the workers but because they had the owners backing they boast over the workers on the other side the mistries also put community related pressures on the worker nowadays the importance of the jobbers has come down and both management and unions play a role in recruiting their own people many workers also expect that they can pass on their jobs to their children many factories employ bd workers who substitute for regular permanent workers who are on leave many of these badly workers have actually worked for many years for the same company but are not given the same status and security this is what is called contract work in the organized sector however the contractor system is most visible in the hiring of casual labor for work on construction sites brick yards and so on the contractor goes to villages and ask if people want to work he will loan them some money this loan includes the cost of transport of the work site the loaned money is treated as an advance pay and the worker works without wages until the loan is repaid 
In the past, agricultural labors were tied to their landlord by doubt. But, however, by Moti moving to casual industrial work, while they are still in debt, they are not bound by other social obligations to the contractor. In this sense, they are more free in an industrial society. They can break the contract and find another employer. Sometimes whole families migrate and the children help their parents. Now let us move to the next point, how is work carried out? In this section we will explore how work actually takes place. How are all products we see around us manufactured? What is the relationship between managers and workers in a factory or in an office? In India, there is a whole range of work settings from large companies where work is automated to small home-based production. The basic task of a manager is to control workers and get more work out of the, them. There are two main ways of making workers produce more. One is to extend the working hours. The other is to increase the amount that is produced within a given time period. Machinery helps to increase production, but it also creates the danger that eventually machine will replace workers. Both Marx and Mahatma Gandhi saw mechanization as a danger to employment. Another way of increasing output is by organizing work. An American called Frederick Winslow Tyler invented a new system in the 1980s, which he called scientific management. It is also known as the Tylerism or Industrial Engineering. Under his system, all work was broken down into its smallest repetitive elements and divided between workers. Workers were timed with the help of stopwatches and had to fulfill a certain target every day. Production was further steep, speeded up by the introduction of the assembly line. Each worker sat along a conveyor belt and assembled only one part of the final product. The speed of work could be set by adjusting the speed of the conveyor belt. In the 1980s, there was an attempt to shift from this system of direct control to indirect control, where workers were supposed to motivate and monitor themselves. But often we find that the old Tylerist processes survive. Workers in textile mills, which is one of the oldest industries in India, often described themselves as extension of the machine. Ram Charan, a weaver who had worked in the Kanpur cotton mills since the 1940s, said, You need energy. The eyes move, the neck, the legs and the hands. Each part moves. Weaving is done under a contentious gaze. One cannot go anywhere. The focus must be on machine. When four machines run, all four must move together. They must not stop. The more mechanized an industry gets, the fewer people are employed but they too have to work at the pace of machine. In Maruti Adyog Limited, two cars roll 
off the assembly line every minute. Workers get only 45 minutes rest in entire day. Two tea breaks of 7.5 minutes each and one lunch break of half an hour. Most of them are exhausted by the age of 40 and take voluntary retirement. While production has gone up, the number of permanent jobs in the factory has gone down. The firm has outsourced all services like cleaning and security as well as the manufacture of parts. The parts suppliers are located around the factory and send the parts every two hours or just in time. Outsourcing and just in time keeps cost low for the company. But the workers are very tense because if supplies fail to arrive, their production targets get delayed. And when they do arrive, they have to run to keep up. No wonder they get exhausted. Now let us look at the services sector. Software professionals are middle class and well educated. Their work is supposed to be self-motivated and creative. But as we see from the their work is also subject to tillerist labor processes. As a result of these working hours in places like Bangalore, Hyderabad and Gurgaon, where many IT firms or call centers are located, shops and restaurants have also changed their opening hours and are open late. If both husband and wife work, then children have to be put in crutches. The joint family which was supposed to have disappeared with industrialization seems to have re-emerged as grandparents are roped into help with children. One important debate in sociology is whether industrialization and the shift to services and knowledge-based work like IT leads to greater skills in society. We often hear the phrase knowledge economy to describe the growth of IT in India. But how do you compare the skills of a farmer who knows how to grow many hundreds of crops relying on his or her understanding of the weather, the soil and the seeds with the knowledge of a software professional. Both are skilled but in different ways. The famous sociologist Harry Braverman argues that the use of machinery actually de-skills workers. For example, Whereas earlier architects and engineers had to be skilled draftsmen, now the computer does a lot of work for them. Now let us wind up the session and thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self-learning podcast.